Yeah, we're going to be doing uh, geography now in just a moment. I'm pulling it up as we speak. Uh, I wanted to at least do Belize, which that, that'll be a short one. It's an 11 minute video. I do want to know about the Belize flag uh, because it's got a very interesting design. There's definitely going to be an interesting story behind that. Um, I think in the future I want to do some live streams where I really run down singular series. Like eventually I will do one where I like I just do hours of geography now just so I can put a good dent in it. Because I really want to get to more of the recent stuff. Because it seems like he puts so much more detail into it. He's got so many like 30 minute videos like in the current stuff and I'm just keeping myself from watching. All right, here we go. We got purple shirt today. Uh, yeah, Belize. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything I know about Belize. I don't know if anybody has any fun facts about it, but I think that that one I'm, I've just got pretty much nothing on. Uh, this is the video that accidentally started playing at uh, at the beginning of the live stream. I. Uh, I accidentally clicked this and I didn't realize that it was capturing it even though I was on my uh, little pre-show image. So we're going to do this, then I'm going to take maybe a 15 minute break and uh, I'm going to keep it rolling and then I'm going to come back and do some game stuff. So, we good? We ready for some geography now guys? Alright, let's uh, get it started. Oh, sorry, I have to actually click. The spacebar is not working. If I told you, welcome to Latin America, the place where people speak English, and to a lesser extent German, you would call me crazy. Well, you'd best start believing that there's a, that such, it's, that there's in such a, it's, it's called Belize. <laughs> Nailed it! Going for a pun there. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. Ah, Belize, Central America's most adorable. Yeah, Neron, where, where are you from? You, you mentioned that you're, uh... You're uh, in uh, a different time zone, like far off of mine. Like, how how far out are you? I'm I'm very curious because we, I know I have an international audience. This is, I know this is like kind of late for you. Uh, where are you coming from? I'm I'm, I'm curious. Let's have a chat. <laughs> uh, I would love to get to your country eventually. I don't know how soon it'll be. It'll probably be a pretty long time. Uh. Sri Lankan. Oh, that's really interesting. Is it? It's it's Sri Lankan, or is it Sri Lankan? Is it like an S H sound? I, I I wasn't sure if I was ever saying that wrong because I've had many occasions to say it, and I just usually try to say it fast so nobody questions my pronunciation. Uh, let me know. I'll I'll check the chat in a second. I'm gonna get the video moving. Adorable little anomaly. But first, you know the drill. Let's dissect the flag. <laughs> Oh boy, here we go, a flag with a lot of things to look at and a lot of Okay, sorry. Before we continue this, Austin, Pennsylvania is a great place to be from. There's so much amazing history that comes from Pennsylvania. I just did a video about a guy who was like a total mad lad from Pennsylvania. It's a wonderful place, especially if you're interested in American history. I would love to visit. Pennsylvania. I don't know how it is to generally live in Pennsylvania, but like from a historic percent perspective, it's very interesting. But that's because I like like the early 19th century and we were all along the uh the East Coast. We haven't completely expanded yet, so but I think it's cool. A lot of symbolism. Okay. First of all, the flag is basically just a flag with the coat of arms. The backdrop is royal blue with red stripes trimming the top and bottom, a white disc in the center with the coat of arms. The blue and white represent the People's Union Party, and the red represents the United Democratic Party of Belize, the two major hmm. political parties of the country. The coat of arms contains two dudes, a mestizo guy holding an axe and a black... So the, uh, the, the colors came from the party. That's interesting, because I think the colors of the current political parties, like, it, it was done in reverse. Either that or they just coincidentally matched the colors on the flag. Uh, with the United States, I'm not even completely sure. I wish I knew the background on our own flag, besides, like, the stars and stripes portions. The color choices, I, I don't know what the significance is completely. 
Uh, but that's interesting that it, it goes in reverse. They have the parties and that determine the colors. A guy holding a paddle to indicate the major demographical ethnicities of Belize. Keep in mind, Belize and Malta are the only sovereign nations to have humans depicted on their flag. Behind the men is a mahogany tree and a shield supported by the hands of the men. Tierce per Paul inverted, which means divided into three parts, upside down in a Y shape, and the first left argent, a paddle and a squaring axe, and the second one to the right, a beating axe and a crosscut saw, and the last one on the bottom, a sailing ship. These items illustrate the historical foundation of Belize being a nation founded upon log and the seafaring residents. Around the men are 50 leaves connected by a circle branch signifying the year 1950 when the People's Union Party was established and took power. Under the men you have the nation's motto on a curled parchment, sub umbra floreo, which means under the shade I flourish. Now that's a cool motto, under the shade I flourish. I mean, who wants to be out in the hot, humid sun all day? Also, I would like to take this moment to announce that this was okay. the longest time we ever spent explaining a flag here on Geography Now. Thanks, Belize, you just blew Afghanistan out out of the water. <laughs> I, um, I, I, I didn't mean it. Ask it. Here's where Belize is located. Nailed it. All right, Belize's geographical location is very unique because it's technically kind of considered the gateway between the Caribbean and the Central American region. First of all, Belize is located on the east coast of the Central American region of North America, east of the very end tip of Mexico and Guatemala with the Caribbean Sea to the east. Although it looks like it to the untrained eye, the west border of Belize is actually not a straight line and in about two thirds mm. of the mark heading north from the southern tip around the town of Banque Viejo del Carmen, the borderline tilts ever so slightly at about a five degree angle and continues up until the northern river in mexico belize has that's still a pretty darn straight line as far as lines go uh borders have so much trouble being straight like the uh the u.s canadian border looks like it's completely straight from a distance but it's like not uh like e even places with like natural geographic boundaries like those are often not going to be straight. So like that's that's still kind of impressive. It has over 400 islands, islets and keys along its coast in the Caribbean, including one of the largest and inhabited ones, Ambergris Key, which if it weren't for that one small little bi-coastal separating creek, it would technically be an exclave attached to Mexico's Costa Mesa Peninsula. By the way, for those of you who don't know, Ambergris is an incredibly rare and expensive substance used in perfumes, basically made out of aged, waxy, buoyant, flammable sperm whale vomit. Hey everybody, I'm a sperm oh. whale. <laughs> hey, I actually learned that from Futurama. I thought it was fake, but that's a real thing. Okay, that that, that is, that there was a big uh, bit about that, and and okay, it, whales were involved. Okay, that that is that is very real. Okay. I said okay a few times. I'm sorry. I'm repetitive. Oh, cha-ching! A lot of the keys and islets are actually home to world-famous resorts and beaches that tourists, especially from English-speaking nations, flock to for vacation getaways. The capital is Belmopan, located in the Cayo district near the center of the country. The capital used to be Belize City, which to this day is still the largest city and center hub for all commercial and economic activity. However, cue the motion Makes graphic. Sense. It's close After to extensive the... damage done Everything. by Hurricane Hattie back in the late 60s, Belize literally built an entirely new capital about 80 kilometers or 50 miles inland. They chose a really interesting and kind of morbid spot though because apparently it's only about 16 kilometers away from the crystal maiden of Aktun Tunichil Muknal cave also known as the cave with sparkling calcified skeletons of children that were kind of yeah, read up on ancient Mayan culture. In fact, Belize is home to yeah, over 900 familiar. ancient Mayan sites speckled all over. In fact, the tallest building in Belize is a Mayan temple, the Caracole Mayan ruins. The town cost only $24 million to build, or after inflation rates, today would only be about $73 million. That's actually kind of cheap, considering that many airports alone cost several times more than that. Belize is also interesting because it's one of the only three not- Oh, Neron coming in with the facts. Uh... Belize had the largest known American alligator for a bit. That That's pretty cool. There's got to be cool videos to watch about alligators, right? <laughs> I don't know if that would be straying too far, but honestly, I kind of want to watch alligators right now. Um, Nikolai Quack, it's good to see you. Um, thank you for coming in. I didn't know you were from Germany, or maybe I did know. May I, I might have known already. Actually, the name Nikolai should have been a giveaway, at least on the region. Uh, it's good to have you here. Non-island nations to be part of CARICOM, or the Caribbean community. Ugh, that would have made such a great transition into the demographics, but we have to stay with the format. Here's what the landscape looks like. 
When entering Belize, you won't Belize your eyes. <laughs> no, but seriously, to put it simply, Belize is a tropical wonderland. Because of the low population density, a huge portion of the land, about 60%, especially inland, is forest, most of which is undisturbed. This makes an ideal home to over 5,000 species of plants and hundreds of different animals, including monkeys, leopards, snakes, frogs, armadillos, bear shark octopuses, debatable, toucans, cotamundis, tapirs, scarlet macaws, and tree otters, and kinkajous, not kinky Jews, kinka Jews, y'all. <laughs> Belize is also home to the first and only jaguar preservation reserve in the world, Coxcomb Wildlife Sanctuary. And that's not even including the coast. In fact, Belize has the second largest barrier reef in the world after Australia's Great Barrier Reef and is a hot spot. Oh, that's really cool. Enthusiasts. Speaking of which, one spot that Belize is absolutely famous for is the Big Blue Hole, located on the Lighthouse Reef Atoll, about 70 kilometers or 40 miles off the mainland. And this spot is a huge circular submarine sinkhole that goes down for about 120 meters or 400 feet where you can go into the hole and you'll be greeted by several colorful species of fish like parrotfish, angelfish, lionfish, trumpet fish, balloon fish, angler shark, fish. Push fish, debatable. Chances are if you can think of any noun it's probably a fish and it's probably in the waters of Belize. Despite the abundance of fish and fish it feels like a place where you would see like the angler fish you know like the scary fish from uh Finding Nemo that's what I know it from I don't know maybe you know it from something else but it feels like one of those things being a huge part of the industry, Belize is actually very concerned about maintaining the reefs and has actually became the first country in the world to ban bottom trawling or seafloor fishnet dragging. In terms of agriculture, about 20% of the land is covered in cultivated land, even though the potential for more is actually totally available. And to this day, bananas mm. and plantains alone make up about 15% of all exports. Agricultural exports oh, but of course, make up about bananas. 40%. Inland to the south, you that reach makes the sense. Maya Mountains, the highest area of the country, home to the highest point. Doyle's Delight, as well as numerous ancient Mayan sites hidden amongst the hills. Back in the 19th century, New World excavation was like the hottest thing to do that everyone was jumping on, and Belize was a favorite spot amongst many numerous British archaeologists. But the um, it, you don't have to feel bad, Austin, for not knowing about Belize. I did not know anything about Belize before this. I tried to come up with something because before these Geography Now things, I always tried to be like, "Hey, what do I know about this country beforehand?" But yeah, no, I think a lot of us don't know much about Belize. It's kind of a small place, uh, not a ton of people seemingly. So like, I, I can see how it could slip under uh, anyone's radar. They're, we're all going to have countries that we don't know that much about or that we don't even know exist. And I've had plenty of countries come up in this series that I don't even know. I didn't even know existed. Uh, like Andorra, I didn't even know about that. <laughs> And that's like between two very major countries that I, I do know a little bit about. The British surprisingly aren't the largest white minority in Belize. You'll never believe who it is, actually. It's actually kind of funny. Cool. To make things short, Belize is small but incredibly mixed. The country has a population of about 340,000 people. About half of the country identifies as ethnically mestizo, about 25% identifies as Creole or Afro-Belizean, and then you have about 12% that identifies as indigenous Mayan. Yes, people, that's right, Mayans still exist. They didn't die out. You're thinking about the Olmecs. And then you have about 6% identifying as Garinagu, or people who are mixed between black and Amerindian. About 4% are Indian, like from India, Indian. And here's where things get really funny. Another 4% percent of the population is actually German or technically German speaking Russian Mennonites. That's right, Mennonites, not to be confused with the Amish. Although they do look very okay, similar and they good. have similar values, there is a difference. Originally, they are descended there. from Mennonites that started in the Russian Empire in the late 1800s that moved to Canada, then to the US, then to Mexico, and then finally in the 1950s settled in Belize. Altogether, there are about 12,000 Mennonites, most of whom are ethnically white and speak Plattdeutsch or a dialect of Did I miss something? No, it's just interesting. Okay, just oh, you're watching. Yeah. Cool. I thought you were just I've been hanging in the and chat. This whole time. Oh, okay, cool. Bird bombs watching. That, that, that's that's the one I'm most proud of. <laughs> of German. Funnier still. In addition, there are about two thousand or so non people that have Apparently. converted to Mennonitism, making it one of the few places this is monetized? In the world where you can see black and mestizo Holy people moly. donning the traditional plain trademark clothing of the Mennonite community. Belize is also interesting too in the fact that it is the only country in Central America that speaks English as an official language, and a lot of the people in Belize though speak Belizean Creole, which is basically a heavily Caribbean-influenced accent of the English language with distinct vocabulary word switches and written in a very basic phonetical structure. For example, the word language is written 
language. When we get to the Haiti video, you'll notice that they basically did the exact same thing, but with French. Each region is kind of distinct hmm. in its populace. For example, in the south, in Stan Creek, you have high populations of Garifunas who speak and dress differently from the people in the north, like in Corozal and Orange Walk, which, by the way, has a high population of Mayan people. Closer to the coast, you have the Creoles, and inland, don't be surprised to find the Mennonites. Eventually, Belize gained its self-governing autonomous status in the 20th century and full independence in 1981, but still remains a Commonwealth country of the UK. Speaking of ties to other countries, this is this is what I'm Belize very excited is without about. A, doubt, a for joyful this month. little gipper. It's funny though because diplomatically, Belize is kind of technically closer to their Caribbean neighbor nations, but geographically, they're still kind of surrounded by and attached to Central America. This circumstance factors in heavily in how Belize plays on the playground. They have a ton of memberships into multilateral alliances such as CARICOM, Interpol, the ACP, IMF, UNESCO, WTO, WTF, debatable, the UN, IFC, and many more. Basically, if you can think of an acronym, Belize is probably part of it. Nonetheless, recently they've been working harder to invest in the Central. American ties to complement the historical ties that they have to the Caribbean. Spanish is commonly spoken as a second language to most of the population as interactions between their neighbors are common. Nicaragua and Mexico are close friends of Belize as they all have developed bilateral agreements fairly well and conduct business on a relatively well level with each other. Guatemala, however, has a little bone to pick with Belize as they have disputes over territorial claims, as in they believe all of Belize should belong to Guatemala. In 1981, they recognized Belize's independence. However, decades later, the dispute still lingers. Is that the Guatemalan flag? Why have I not seen that before? That bird is adorable. Fingers ever so slightly to the minds of Guatemalans. Belize is also one of the few countries that recognizes Taiwan as an independent sovereign state. It all started with some oh, Taiwanese Belizean guy named William Quinto, who was into politics, yada yada yada. They built ties with Taiwan. When it comes to their best friends, more or less they might consider the US and the UK. As a former colony and commonwealth, the UK still keeps a close embrace on Belize, and in fact, Prince Harry even visited in 2012 on a Commonwealth tour. In honor, the Belizeans renamed a boulevard in the capital as Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II Boulevard. The U.S. has been and still is the largest economic aid provider and investor, especially in funds and business. Doing business in Belize is actually surprisingly easy and only requires a few steps for registration and licensing, allowing Americans to focus on utilizing Belize's tactical position and policies for growth on both countries. Wow, I actually wrote that. Dang, I'm getting better at this. In your yeah, face, you Mr. are. He is getting better at this. Uh, it's amazing, like how fast his the his content improved during this period. That's why I'm so excited to see the more current stuff. Uh, yeah. Kuttenberger, who gave me an F on my English test on the first day of school. Granted, I didn't do the summer reading, but still. In conclusion, Belize may be both a Caribbean and Central American nation, but in all honesty, it really kind of isn't neither one either. I mean, where else are you going to find black Mennonites wearing bonnets, speaking German, with toucans in their backyards, and English-speaking Mayans diving into 400-foot deep holes? Belize. It's kind of fascinating, Belize. isn't it? Stay tuned. Benin is coming up next. Benin. All right. That sounds like fun. All right. Let me just pull up the everything. There we go. Okay. So that's about it for the react -y stuff. Uh... In a moment, I'm going to take, I don't know, a 10 minute break. I guess at, uh, in like a minute or, yeah, in like a minute, I'm going to take like a 10 minute.